Hello and welcome to Dartmouth-Hitchcock's virtual roundtable series, Heads Up, Coping Through COVID-19. I'm Audra Burns, your moderator for this series. Today is our final roundtable conversation of the reinstallment of Heads Up. Today we are going to discuss what's next for seniors and how we move closer to how we lived our lives pre-pandemic. I'm excited to have joining me today, Johanna Bellavo, President and CEO of Visiting Nurse and Hospice for Vermont and New Hampshire. Welcome, Johanna. Thank you, Audra. It's really a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you here. We also have Lori Fortini, Program Leader at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Aging Resource Center, which is part of Dartmouth Center for Health and Aging. Hey, Lori. Hi, Audra. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. And joining out, rounding out our conversation is Bernie Seifert, Director of Adult Services at the National Alliance for Mental Illness, New Hampshire. And she's also a social worker at the Dartmouth Centers for Health and Aging. Hey, Bernie. Hi, Audra. Thank you. What a great panel we have for this very important topic. So thank you all for joining me today. And we're going to kick it off with you, Johanna. So based on your experience, what was the hardest part of the pandemic for seniors? Well, like um, for most of us, I would start with the isolation, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I know my colleagues here um, will dive into that from their perspective and their organization. So from the position of a visiting nurse, I would say it was around access to healthcare. So in those, particularly the very early days of the pandemic, when clinics were shutting down and even when they reopened, there was very limited access for people having access to the care that they needed was very challenging for folks. And one of the things that I'm really proud of is how VNH was able to continue to provide some essential service to older adults during that very uh, challenging uh, period. And we recognized that telehealth wasn't going to be available for everyone um, in our service region, particularly in the very rural areas that we provide. And having our team members being able to go to people's homes um, and oftentimes they were the only people who some of our older adults were seeing. Uh, their networks can be very small and sometimes the VNH is the only team member, the only personal contact that they have. And so um, that ability uh, to provide access to needed healthcare services uh, was really critical us as an organization and to meet that really great need. And I'm sure seeing the smiling faces of your VNH workers coming in, I'm sure they were thrilled, especially during that challenging time. So I'm sure everyone's very appreciative for the great work of home health care workers. So thank you for that. Um, Lori, so the programs that you run at the Aging Resource Center are great for seniors to socialize and spend time with each other. But how did the center, you know, adapt during the pandemic? Yeah, the center closed in March 2020, like many programs, and we had a team that quickly converted to a virtual program. We concentrated specifically on providing technical support to help seniors use Zoom, and we were able to expand our reach across New Hampshire, Vermont, as well as many other states. The seniors were willing and more able to connect in, um, in this way than I think people really expected. Um, I'm sure many of us remember the first times we saw people on Zoom, it was really touching and very sweet. They, but in a very short while, they're making virtual backgrounds and they're connecting with their own families. So it was really wonderful. Um, we also reached out to people directly. Um, and uh, just asking them how they were doing. Again, trying to um, just talk about whether they, how they're isolated they were and if they needed any help. Um, we had volunteers that helped with errands before the systems were in place. And we assisted people to sign up for vaccines appointments through the state systems. And we continue to have a call, um, an ongoing call check-in for people who continue to be at risk for, for isolation. Um, and then we adapted the program directly. We focused more on virtual support groups, mind and spirit, arts, and ways to connect with people. And this really was a lifeline to a lot of folks. Um, a lot of the community was dealing with um, needs, regular needs, food and medication and appointments. We were really talking about their spirits and connecting with them, so it was lovely. Um, and we just made a special effort 
to reach out to our caregivers caring for people with dementia. This was a very hard hit group. Uh, people with dementia were disoriented and didn't understand the lack of human contact. So this was a very vulnerable group. So we added more support groups and more training for them. I think I can probably speak for the majority of our, our viewers as a collective thank you from grandkids and families for all the work you did to get our seniors adapting to technology. I think that was one of the big things you, you really worked on with making sure they had access to that and, and knew how to use it. You took the stress off a lot of grandkids trying to teach their grandparents how to, how to get online. So that was wonderful. And it's been great to see how we, we've been able to, you know, use this time to connect with um, our older family members. So, so great work from your team there. And um, Bernie, in your experience, what would you say was the biggest mental health challenge for seniors throughout the past year? And, and how did NAMI assist the seniors during this time of need? Well, um, I think as both uh, Johanna and uh, Lori talked about, the isolation definitely has, um, it, it was huge for all ages, not just older adults, but definitely when you're talking about older adults, um, it just increases that, that risk of depression and anxiety. I think all people, all ages experience an increase in depression and anxiety in general, uh, but definitely for older adults that, that um, has been an, uh, probably one of the biggest mental health issues. And, it, and that pertains to one of the things that I um, do at the Dartmouth Centers for Health and, Age, Health and Aging is um, a facilitating support group for people uh, who are care partners of individuals with dementia. And we saw an increase in symptoms of depression and anxiety, not just in the caregivers, but in the people who have dementia as well. Um, that isolation, that lack of social connectedness, um, no matter you know what age um, or whether or not you have dementia, it does it you know that does increase the, that risk. Um, so definitely, being isolated doesn't necessarily mean you become depressed. But you add loneliness, you add social disconnectedness, and it, it does uh, increase that risk. Um, so we've uh, having reaching out to people is really important. Uh, seniors in general are, are a little bit more isolated than the rest of the population, um, and this definitely has increased that that uh, that isolation. Um, what we've done at NAMI in New Hampshire is, uh, you know, what, one of the things we do is that we have an information and resource line that's available for people to call in and mostly it's family members of individuals who have a mental health issues call in for to find out about services and supports. Um, we've increased our time instead of having it just Monday through Friday, um, that line was open Monday uh, for seven days a week. So we would respond to the calls seven days a week and we are still doing that today. The other thing that we did is um, last fall, we offered an online um, series called Side by Side. And this is specifically to address the mental health um, issues of older adults and their families. And so we, it was open for family members as well as older adults themselves to take in, to, to join us. Um, and we recorded these. So we, we do have these available on our Naomi New Hampshire uh, website. So the topics that we talked about was depression in older adults, anxiety in older adults, and understanding dementia. Because if you have a family member who is experiencing some symptoms, you wanna make sure, you know, is this depression? Because one of the good things is that depression and anxiety are treatable. We can do something about that. Um, and knowing what the difference between the symptoms of depression and dementia. Um, and, and anxiety and other, other issues that people may be experiencing. Um, in that series, we had uh, Justice, um, Chief Justice jo John Broderick join us to talk about his own family um, experiences. That was really helpful, I think, for seniors to hear that um, because the stigma attached to mental illness for any age group is high, especially for older adults. So hearing from, from Justice, um, uh, Chief Justice John Broderick was very helpful. And we also had a geriatric psychiatrist, Gary, uh, Dr. Gary Moak, join us to talk a little bit about depression and anxiety. So um, these are available on, on our NAMI website. Um, so those are some of the things that we, do, we have done. Um, and we continue to provide that education support and advocacy for all ages. Very helpful resources. And for our viewers, we'll be sure to post 
the links to these resources, if you go to dh.org and search for Heads Up, we will have all of these informational links available. So please do check out our website after the video. So Johanna, COVID-19 has disrupted healthcare in both good and challenging ways. So what are some of the good changes that older adults will benefit from in the coming months and years? Well, one of the best silver linings from my perspective was really the opportunity for home-based care providers to demonstrate all the capabilities that we have and the critical services that we can bring right to people um, in their homes. And I think we will see an increasing focus um, and availability of home-based care. Our federal and state legislators are really looking at this as an opportunity um, both to increase access to health care for well, Americans in general, but certainly will impact older adults specifically. And um, thinking of ways in which to decrease cost of care. So we can do a lot in the home that actually helps us at the health system um, at the large global economy level. Uh, so I would expect that that would be something that we'll continue to see more of and that older adults will be able to uh, benefit from. Along this line, we talked a little bit about telehealth, and that has been a critical um, component of our strategy during the pandemic when we needed that from a safety perspective. And in our particular rural geography, knowing that uh, we need some in infrastructure, some investments in our broadband systems, as an example, uh, and some other capabilities at the state level, I know that there's active legislation looking at. Uh, so older adults will definitely be able to benefit from additional telehealth services um, in an, um, as well as other services that we can bring into them. Yeah, it's been it's been great to really see the home health care industry shine during this time. And I think it's also opened up a whole new potential um, workforce that maybe have been thinking about health care, but didn't really know that home health care was an option. So it's been great to see um, all the great work that they've been doing. Um, so now, Lori, as more seniors are getting vaccinated, what are the center's plans for reopening and resuming those in-person programs? Like many public places, such as libraries and senior centers, we're reviewing the CDC guidelines and the DH guidelines for facilities and planning for reopening. We're aware that we're missing having our participants stop in to browse our lending library or to walk in and ask questions or to speak to someone like our geriatric chaplain or our dementia resource specialist. So although we've been connecting by phone, we know that we miss seeing people and um, being able to work with people face to face and have those in person programs. As I mentioned, we've, we've reached many more people virtually during this time, but at the same time, many of our local participants have not been participating in our virtual programs. It could be because of limited internet in the, some of the rural areas, or it could be that they're just not interested or able to connect. So now our challenge is really keeping connected to our virtual audiences. Our virtual programs are not gonna go away. We've made too many friends and made too many connections, um, but we're also hoping to gain back our local participants. So to that end, we've been reviewing our program and we plan to continue classes virtually while we discuss how to open the center safely. We'll most likely start by opening the space to one-to-one -to -one visitors and to having one-to-one -one appointments with um, a chaplain or as I said, the dementia resource specialist, and as well as starting up those programs that really did not convert well to a virtual program, some format, some of the exercise programs, some of the programs that are engagement for people with dementia, <coughs> They had a harder time uh, connecting on Zoom or virtually. So we are hoping to have more in-person for that um, population especially. And, um, but we're really gonna be looking at every program and trying to make the best way to make those connections. Yeah, you really can't have coffee or tea chat, you know, over Zoom. I mean, you can, but I'm sure the seniors love when they're able to come into the center. So it's great to hear that things will slowly start to open and roll out and, and everyone will have something to look forward to while still keeping, like you said, those the positive traits of, of the virtual opportunities to engage more people. So um, 
you know, Bernie, let's talk about, you know, the pandemic has caused heightened stress. You mentioned about the increase in anxiety. So what advice do you have for someone who is concerned about their seniors, loved ones, mental health? Well, one thing I would <clears throat> suggest is that um, they reach out and check, check in on, on their loved ones. Excuse me. <coughs> um, and they, they uh, and don't assume that just because you ask someone, they say, well, I'm fine. Because um, seniors are pretty notorious for saying they're fine um, when, when asking them if they're okay. Um, they're, they're reluctant to ask for help. So, so definitely reach out and um, whether it's calling in, you know, regular phone calls, um, sending out little notes. Um, you know, I had a, a friend whose mother uh, turned 90 during this pandemic and she was, couldn't ha go visit her mother and was concerned about how um, her birthday would be. So she had several of her friends send in birthday cards. Um, she, trying to, she was trying to get his, about 90 birthday cards to be sent in. And that was a real uh, uplift. You know, it really lifted her mother's spirits up to get all these cards by surprise in the mail. Um, so reaching out, those, those notes in the mail mean a lot. Um, the other thing I would, I would suggest is don't hesitate to really work on trying to get somebody connected virtually if they aren't already. Um, I worked um, a few times, like had to convince my mother-in-law who was in her mid eighties to uh, really work with me to get her connected to Zoom. And it took about three or four sessions of practices, but that opened up her world where she was able to connect with her friends. She was able to join her, um, her church group uh, weekly. She was able to um, you know, connect with families. Um, so her family members. So it's really important for us to persist and have that little extra support and extra patience to get people connected because it can really up and open up in the whole world. You know, their telehealth, um, their appointments. Um, so it's very important to do that. And, uh, you know, just understanding that older adults sometimes will, you know, say, oh, I'm not important enough to do this. I mean, we've been you know, if we open the news and, and people were isolated at their home and they were, had access to news and it can be very depressing to hear over and over again. So it's important for us to really encourage people to limit their news intake sometimes to maybe a half hour a day because uh, to reduce some of that anxiety and depression that can, that can um, happen with that. And also just reaching out and don't, don't assume that people are okay, just making sure that you, you persist. That's, that's really great advice. Um, and let's, let's see what Johanna, let's, you know, you mentioned earlier about the importance of your home health workers, you know, they're in and out of seniors homes every single day. So what advice do they have for others who might be taking care of seniors, whether it's their family, their friend, a parent, you know, to ensure that they have what they need to be safe um, as the pandemic resolves? Yeah, that's a great question, Audra. And I would just emphasize what Bernie just described in terms of really check in and to explore a little bit more deeply. Most people will often respond with, I'm fine, I don't need anything. Um, and so you do have to do a bit of sometimes. Definitely the first step. For caregivers working um, with older adults, I think it is important to uh, do some exploration and understand what's available for home-based services. There are a number of things that um, older adults can access in their community, either through their local uh, VNA or the senior center, uh, community nurse groups. We have a, a nice, uh, a well-rounded community parish nurse um, service in our region. So there's lots of services available to seniors uh, in their homes. I would also encourage, like we've heard today from Bernie, exploring those two great organizations in our region, which have a plethora of services and uh, ways for older adults to stay connected, which is a critical part for their health uh, and well-being, their, their physical, spiritual, mental health. Um, that connectedness is really important. And from a safety perspective, though, I would still strongly encourage um, older adults need to recognize their risks. We're all really excited about where the vaccine um, is taking us as a community and that we will be able to open back up and be back together in person. Uh, but older adults are still at risk um, in terms of COVID-19, and it's important that they understand and where those risks may lie. 
look at the guidelines, you know, follow what the CDC and our local uh, state governments are, are sharing with us in terms of masking and distancing. Um, it's really critically important because while uh, there is light at the end of this tunnel, we are still in the middle of the pandemic. Um, which of that, as excited as we are, that summer is here um, and you know, the vaccines are, are getting us much further to the end, but we're not there yet. Absolutely, that's that's critical information to remind people of. So thank you for that. Lori, what are some creative ways that you suggest for seniors to stay engaged? Well, as both the panelists have been talking about, the pandemic is not over and things are not totally back to normal. So we're, um, we're trying to, again, trying to address the isolation. Um, one huge benefit through this time has been living in the upper valley and getting outside to garden or even sit in the shade with friends, um, you know, socially distanced until we're all sure it's all safe, but it lifts everybody's spirit. So getting outside, um, encouraging everyone to reach out, try new things, stay connected, um, and ask for support if you need it. Um, another uh, connection that was made was um, our ability to, for long distance connections. So we've had family members come to programs together, to take classes together. Um, even if their sons live in Ohio, they're able to be together. And that's been really special as well um, to talk about classes that you're taking together, even when you're geographically apart. And the biggest thing for us is um, we will continue to offer all of our programs in the best way possible to help older adults and families improve mind, bodies, and spirits. Um, we're here for all of the older adults in our community and everyone that, um, that is uh, affected by them and, and close to them. And we really care about everybody's well being. And we just, if you have any questions or need anything, please come and see us. Yep, you've all touched upon the fact that there are some really excellent resources for seniors engagement and mental health support. And we'll be sure to link all of that information on our website. And, and um, Johanna made a really great point about the sooner we're all vaccinated and the more protected we're gonna be. So please make sure you and your loved ones are, are getting out there and getting vaccinated. So Johanna, Lori, and Bernie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks, bye. bye. Pleasure to be here. So you can view past Heads Up Coping Through COVID-19 segments and additional information and the resources that I mentioned at the link on our screen. Although the series is done for now, conversations about mental healthness can't stop here. It's important to keep that conversation going. So please continue to share your stories to shed light on this important topic. Thank you all for watching. Take care. <laughs>